Nanyehi is the story of Nancy Ward set to music. It's going to be on stage at the Hard Rock November 5th, 6th, and 7th. Becky Hobbs is writer-producer of the show and joins us to talk more about it. Becky, big old <laughs> welcome to you. Thank you. It's great to be here. You know, Sam. for such a tiny person, you've got the biggest reputation. <laughs> well, thanks, I guess. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> you earned it all, child. First of all, you're a native Oklahoman. I am. I was born and raised in Bartlesville. But you've made such an incredible mark in music. Well, thank you. Um, How I've, did that come about? I'd be curious to know. Well, I started writing songs in Bartlesville when I was nine years old. Really? And uh, yeah, I found it was a lot easier to make up my own songs than to read like notes on a sheet of paper. So uh, I started making up my own songs. and. Uh, uh, in 1965, when I was 15, I formed what has now been documented as the first all-female rock band in the state of Oklahoma. Sweet. Yeah, and uh, we had lots of fun, and we, you know, went around the area and played a lot of gigs. And uh, then I spent a couple of years in Baton Rouge, Louisiana, in well, a I'm southern gonna, rock I'm band. I'm going to stop you right there because okay. we're going to talk about the music side of your life in just a couple of moments. Okay. Right now, I want to delve into the play. Okay. An intriguing concept. It's about a relative, is it not? Yes. Nancy Ward, also known as Nanya my name is her Cherokee Hobbs. name, was my fifth great-grandmother. And uh, she was born in 1738 in what is now eastern Tennessee. She died in 1822. Uh, her grave is a historical marker near Benton, Tennessee. And all my life, my mom told me, she'd say, you know, Becca, you know you're a direct descendant of Nancy Ward, beloved woman of the Cherokee. So I knew her story all my life growing up. Mm -hmm. And even when I was a little girl, I knew that one day I would pay tribute to her somehow. That's a pretty heady responsibility for a young person to carry. And to, to have known that early on. Mm -hmm. And for, from all I'm told about the production, this is not a lightweight production. Although it is entertaining and it conveys the message, it's still a heavy production. Yes, it is. Uh, we have a large cast of, uh, of around 35. Uh, great director, Nick Sweet, and he's also my co-writer of the book. And I composed the music, or co-composed, mm -hmm. 18 songs. It is a, uh, a massive, uh, it's a challenge. And, and uh, I've taken it upon myself for her voice to be heard. She was first honored as a war woman, Giga Gaya Gaya Aniya Ria. And how she was honored as a war woman, she was chewing the bullets beside her husband, Kingfisher, when they were in battle with the Creek Indians in 1755, and she was about 17 years old then. Kingfisher was killed, fell to the ground. She took his rifle and led the Cherokee to victory. She was honored as a war woman, and war women had the right to uh, uh, decide what happened with the captives, whether they'd be killed, uh, enslaved, adopted into the tribe, or released. So she had a lot of power as a war woman, and then later in her life she stood for peace, and she became a very important peacemaker between the Cherokees and all others, and most importantly, the early Americans. Clearly, you had family to draw on to find out more about her, but there had to be a, a good deal of research on your part to learn more about her, am I right? Well, yes, you are right. And, and fortunately, there is quite, quite a bit written about her because several of her speeches have been, were transcribed, uh, uh, you know, by, by, of course, English-speaking, mm -hmm. you know, white people. But we have several of her speeches and uh, quite a bit of her history. And, of course, I rely a lot on the experts like David Hampton, who was the president of the Association of the Descendants of Nancy Ward, Jack Baker, who's also a very good friend. A lot of people who know a lot more than I do. How long did it take you to write it? Wow, well, uh, I met Nick Sweet in 2007 uh, during the Oklahoma Centennial Celebration mm -hmm. in Bartlesville, and that's when we discussed writing a musical together, and we embarked on it in November of 2008 and we've been working nonstop ever since. We've had, this is our fifth full production. Uh, mm -hmm. Our first one was in Hartwell, Georgia, then NSU in Tahlequah, then Tulsa last August at the Hard Rock, and then uh, Kingsport, Tennessee, and then now we're back at the Hard Rock. 
Well, with the show that's coming up the 16th at the Hard Rock, is this the first time this particular production will be seen? Um, yes, with the particular cast, uh, mm -hmm. yes. And we have made some improvements all along. You know, since it is a new work, we have been learning as we go. And uh, some of the music has been amped up quite a bit. Some of the script has been changed and improved, a, a little bit of it. And yes, we have uh, actually, our leading lady, Michelle Honecker, lives in New York, and she's coming back to play the role again. Rudy Ramos, uh, who's from Lawton originally, and he's been on you know High Chaparral TV mm -hmm. show mm -hmm. and Clint Eastwood movies, et cetera. He's playing Peace Chief Atakula Kula. And then we have Travis Fight, who lives here in Tulsa, playing Dragon Canoe again. Mm -hmm. And we have probably about a dozen people from last year's cast and then we have uh, all, all local people, and then we have some new people. You know, Becky, it's, Oklahoma is an intriguing state. Anybody can lay mm. claim to the fact that, well, our state has a lot of history, but Oklahoma, it seems, has a lot of history that you just can't, you, I mean, you won't necessarily find it in the history books. Right. I know for a fact that you can get on a freeway anywhere in Oklahoma drive down the road and on a summer evening you can see smoke off in the distance. And that can be one of two things. It can be a farmer clearing brush or it can be a ceremony that goes back five, six hundred years and one doesn't know exactly what it is, which I think only adds to the mystique of Oklahoma and the folks whose tribes are represented here. Yes. There are customs and ceremonies that exist even now in Oklahoma that people come and go and never have an inkling that, that these things are alive and well and that right. people are working very hard to keep them alive. Does it trouble you at times, and I don't want to get political here, but does it trouble you at times to realize that so many of the old ones are dying off and so many of the memories are going with them? Yes. Oh, absolutely. And, and I look back at my grandmother. Uh, I'm descended from Nanyihi through all females, except for my great-grandfather, who came west. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and I can look back and see things that she did in some of her ways that now that I've learned more about my Cherokee heritage, growing up, I didn't know that much about it. Mm -hmm. You know, I was interested in boys and rock and roll, you know. And now uh, I'm, I really treasure my Cherokee heritage. And uh, it, it, it is sad that so many of the elders, but you know, in the Cherokee Nation now, you know, there's the immersion classes and a lot of the little bitty ones are learning to speak Cherokee. You bet. So many, and I think that now, uh, that the first graduating class that they started the immersion, immersion school with uh, graduated a couple of years ago. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. Plus they've got an app you can get for your cell phone that's right. You know, that it has the language. Right, the broken Cherokee syllabary. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's a marvelous idea. Yes. You know, to keep it going. Do you feel as though, well, before we get away from it, did your grandmother choose not to be a part of the removal or did it start after she passed? Oh, Nancy Ward, mm -hmm. the removal was after she passed. She so, died in 1822. Oh, okay. Yes. So uh -huh. she wouldn't. Have been a part of that. But pretty much all situation. of her descendants, pretty much all of her descendants were either on the Trail of Tears or in, removed. You and know, I some urge, came early. I urge everybody at home watching this, if, or if you're going to hear me at all, please look into the Trail of Tears because mm. it's not exactly what you think it was, and it was not portrayed accurately anywhere from Hollywood. It, it's it's a, a brutal, brutal series of events, and it didn't happen once. There were several cattle drives, as they're referred to. Becky, yes. we've got about a minute left in this segment. Uh, I, I, I'm really looking forward to this production. I, I'm and I know that that you're trying to get the word out to folks about it. So let's start at the beginning. It's it, it opens on the 16th. Uh, oh, it opens on November 5th. Oh, I'm sorry, yeah. on November 5th. Yes, uh, no, and and we have shows November 5th, 6th, and 7th. Mm -hmm at the joint out at the Tulsa Hard Rock Hotel and Casino. Beautiful venue, just gorgeous. Um, and uh, for the first time ever, our first production of Nanyahi children can come to the show at the joint. 
And uh, if you're a Cherokee Nation citizen, you can also get $5 off of your ticket. Which is a good, good <laughs> deal. And it's a very modest ticket price as well. And I'll have the chance to explain why I did that slip up on the 16th in just a couple of minutes. <laughs> okay. We're going to take a short break. We come back. There's a brand new honor on the horizon for Becky. When we come back, we'll talk about that, and I'll explain my little flub on the date as well. Stay with us.